Let's start by reading our texts. Our texts is taken from Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there a salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men, given among men, by which we must be saved. Only the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus is the only name given among men by which we must be saved. Our topic again, the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. God has packed unlimited power, salvation, blessings, and divine promises in the name of Jesus Christ for us, humankind, to benefit. This is the master key of the kingdom of God. It is the universal identity card. Glory be to God. When you have the name of Jesus Christ, heaven recognizes you, the earth yields to you, and beneath the earth, that is hell. With Satan and all his demons are subject to you. Oh, you will recall in Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 70 testified, Lord, they said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. In Acts chapter 19, verse 15. Acts chapter 19, verse 15. Even the evil spirit themselves, demons, they said to the seven sons of Sceva, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? They said to him, you are unknown. They said to him, you do not have the identity of Jesus. But Paul, we know. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But you don't have the identity. The identity of Jesus. You are a non-identified element. <laughs> brothers and sisters, there are people that have identity, that are recognized in heaven, recognized in hell beneath, and recognized on earth. In John chapter 11, verses 41 and 42, Jesus Christ himself said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Those who are in Christ and with Jesus Christ are identified. They know heaven knows them. Heaven recognizes them. The earth yields to them. And beneath the earth, glory be to God. Beloved brothers, there is a measure of the fullness of Christ. There is a measure of the fullness of Christ. And we are on the journey. That's what we are here for, to grow to that measure. As the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, it says that we should grow to become a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So our Christian journey is a continuous growth in faith and knowledge of the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, till we come to that perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I believe without any shadow of doubt that any one of us can grow to that measure of the fullness of Christ. There is a measure of the fullness of Christ for you, my brothers and sisters. And if you can grasp what God has packed in the name of Jesus for you, you will in no doubt be recognized in heaven. The earth will yield to you. Beneath the earth, hell, Satan with his demons are subject to you. And so let it be in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. 
I believe that you want to grow to the measure of the fullness of Christ. Or don't you want it? I do. And I know you do. That is why we are undertaking this study, oh God. This is why we are here, brothers and sisters, teaching on this platform a pathway to eternal life. So I encourage you to keep listening, to take the study seriously. They are loaded on the YouTube. So go there and play it over and over to yourself and share and invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters, even your enemies. For they need to hear the pathway to eternal life. They need to come to receive the master key and the universal identity card that opens all ways and all doors unto all who come to Jesus Christ, who come into God through Jesus Christ. Beloved, you know the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, desire the pure milk of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. It is by the word that we grow. So in part one of this study, we raised a number of questions to enable us to understand this study deeper. Number one, we raise the question, what has God promised in the name of Jesus Christ? Number two, why do some people call the name and pray in the name, but nothing happens that is receive no answers? Number three, how shall we see and enjoy God's provision in the name of Jesus? That is the power, the salvation, the blessings and all the promises of God that God has packed in the name. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10 says that wisdom is profitable to direct. Another translation puts it this way, that wisdom is the key to success. Wisdom leads us to success. And I pray again, may God's Holy Spirit give us the wisdom and the understanding, the application of the name of Jesus Christ. So today, let's look deeper at what has God promised us in the name of Jesus. What has God promised us in the name of Jesus? Let's look at that. Hallelujah. As usual, I would like us to have a discussion. So I am going to touch on this briefly, and then I will open the floor for discussion, questions, and anything on this topic that you may want to share so we can understand this subject deeper. What has God promised us in the name of Jesus? Let me put this in three or four key dimensions. You know, for somebody to have a name that commands and influences things. That person has to have some position, power, authority for people to hear his name and say, okay, yeah, I will do what that person says. Is that simple in the world that we are living in? We'll come back to this. We all know if you're working in an organization, and some, that's what they call name dropping, name dropping <laughs> in corporate world. And even in, in politics, they do a lot of name dropping. And in the meeting you are attending, somebody said the MD says, you should do this. You are in for it. You take it on and fire on because MD has said. That's the final executive order in that organization. So Jesus Christ has inherited a name that is above all names. So the name of Jesus, number one, is by inheritance. Jesus Christ was born the son of God, the son of God. And that makes him the heir and the inheritor of everything that God has, what God has created. So Jesus was born 
the son of God. So he has inherited the name that is above all names. Number two, Jesus Christ has earned the name that is above all names. So it is, he earned it. He earned it by the work that he has done. He earned it by the works. He came to this world. He was born into this world. He lived the perfect life. He lived the sinless life. He did the works that nobody has ever done. Until today, he is the standard that we have just spoken about to grow to the measure of the fullness of Christ, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Though a son, although the son of God, yet he humbled himself. He died on the cross for mankind. He gave himself. Just like Isaac, that God said to Abraham, go and sacrifice your son, your only son, to me. And Abraham obeyed and Isaac submitted himself to the father. God, using that as a symbol, said to Abraham, through your seed, I will raise up through your seed the entire human race shall be saved. God sent his son and Jesus humbled himself and died to be sacrificed, to be crucified, to shed his blood for the forgiveness of the sins of mankind that whoever comes and accepts him receives the forgiveness of God and is brought into the kingdom and receives that identity of God's children. So Jesus earned it and it did not end there. By his death, he has paid the price. Oh, God Almighty raised him from the dead and he is the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah. And so he overcame death. He overcame came grief, he overcame hell, he overcame Satan and all his demons, and he became the undisputable chapter of the universe, hallelujah, glory be to God, Jesus Christ, and the name that is above all names, by his works, by his achievement, by what God Almighty has wrought and performed, in his life. Number three, God Almighty conferred upon him the name that is above all names. God, the creator of all things, the creator of all spirits, the creator of us all. And the Bible says the father of spirits conferred on him, Jesus Christ, the name that is above all names. I will bring number four after we have discussed this. I'll read a number of scriptures. Now let's look at some scriptures to buttress this point. All the way from the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, seven, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Hallelujah. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah prophesied 
that this child that will be born, the government, he will be born with the government upon his shoulder. And he already is born with a name. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Oh, no wonder his name is Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. And you see that in the same Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah 7, 14. He said, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Oh, he's all in the name. He was born with the name above all names. His name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God with us. His name shall be called the mighty God. He was born, oh, with the name. He, in, he inherited the great name, the name that is above all names. Glory be to God. You know, in the book of Luke, the book of Luke, just let's remind us of that. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. Let's read verses, uh, let's just read verse 35, verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, by inheritance, receive that excellent name. Receive the name that is above all names. Now let's go to the book of Hebrews, and you will see all this now coming together. Let's read Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his son. Who is his son? Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed, whom he had everything, the point I have made all are here. So note the word. Whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he met the worlds. Three. Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, all that Isaiah prophesied, the mighty God, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, the right hand of the Father, so you don't mix it up and begin to say Jesus is the Father. Jesus is not the Father. But the Father has conferred all power in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth upon him, Jesus Christ, for our sake. Glory be to God. So read it again with me from verse 3. Who, being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Verse 6, which is where we will stop. But when he again brings the firstborn, into the world, the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So here you can see all the four points that I said 
I, that I, I made three, I said, I'll tell you the fourth. And I see hold back, I'll come back to the fourth. So here you are seeing by inheritance, Jesus obtained. It, by, it is by inheritance, Jesus well, has a more excellent name, was given a more excellent name because he is the son of by his works, whereby he laid down his life, watched us of our sins, rose from the dead by the power of God, and ascended to heaven where he sits at the right hand of power, the right hand of God, the right hand of majesty. He has achieved and obtained a more excellent day. Number three, here you have seen that God Almighty has conferred upon him. Verse two, you see they say, has in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed. He has appointed heir of all things. God has conferred upon him the name that is above all names. A more excellent name than all the angels. A more excellent name than all creatures of God in heaven on earth. Let's move quickly. Because I want us to discuss to further confirm this word as we go to Revelation. So that was Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Let's go to Revelation. We'll read chapter 1, 4 to 6, and then Revelation 5. We'll read through that. And we will then just read a few more scriptures and go into the discussion. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 4 to 6. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler, can you pronounce that with me loudly, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. All say, Amen. Revelation chapter 5. Let's read from verse 1. It's a long read to 13. Go with me. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll, God sitting on his throne. So I saw at the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. Three, and no one, no one, can you say that with me? No one. So when we say there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. You need to know there is no one in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth. Verse 3, Revelation chapter 5, verse 3. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Verse 4. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the others said to me, do not weep. Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose it's seven seals. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, no one else was found worthy in heaven, on earth, or beneath the earth to even look into the book. Ha ha ha. But the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, Jesus Christ, so you can understand when the blind Bartimaeus cried, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
the root of David has prevailed. Say, has prevailed. He has prevailed. He has prevailed in heaven. He has prevailed on earth. He has prevailed beneath the earth. Jesus Christ has prevailed. He has earned the right. <laughs> he has achieved. He has done what no one else could do. He has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. That is why there is nowhere there is a seal about your life that Jesus cannot open. The name of Jesus cannot open. Hallelujah. Whether in heaven above, on the earth, beneath the earth. The name of Jesus is the master key, is the universal identity card. Glory be to God. Those who are in him are recognizing heaven. Earth yields to them. Beneath the earth, hell, with all, with, with Satan and his demons, are subject to them who are in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, and I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Brothers and sisters, verse 6 is deep. If the spirit of God permits me, sometime I will talk about verse 6. For those of you who are still quarreling, about Jesus and his deity when the word God is used as the son of God you are confused and those of you who when they use the name uh, the word God like we read in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 his name shall be called the mighty God Capital, not single, as some of you are trying to ma manipulate your translation. The mighty God. Some of you also get confused and quarrel. Ah, God. It is about the deity of Jesus Christ. He said to the Jews, before Abraham was, I am. I am. He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days. And when he saw it, he was glad. And they said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? You were not here on earth when Abraham was here. So where did Abraham see his days? Ah. So Jesus Christ is not the father. And as you can see here, he took the scroll from him who sat on the throne, the father. Let's read verse six again. But like I said, I'll leave some things. May the spirit of God take you to that level, that realm where you will um, understand what verse six of Revelation chapter five is. Remember I said what it is. So I'll read it again. He said, and I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns, no doubt, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Seven. Then he came and took the scroll, hallelujah, out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. He took the scroll, the scroll that contains everything about your life, about my life, the scroll that contains everything about the heaven and the earth and beneath the earth. He took the scroll. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. 
and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Who is this? Jesus Christ. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. You shall reign. By this name, you shall reign. I shall reign. We shall reign. In the name of Jesus. Then I looked and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, not that, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and blessing, and glory. Hallelujah. This is Jesus. 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. All say a big amen. This is him, Jesus. So when you read Philippians chapter 2, then verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Oh, let your faith be strong that you may understand. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name, the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I tell you then the fourth point, now that you have heard all. Go with me back to Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 1 that we read. Look at verse 2 again. Has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. He made the worlds in plural. He made the worlds. All things were made by him. Oh, you remember that? Paul, that's why you should take time then to study Paul, who had unparalleled revelation that God showed him, Jesus Christ revealed so much to him that even he himself said, I am not permitted to say certain things that I have that has been revealed to me. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Remember, Paul said, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Two, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in a body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up. To the third heaven. He said, and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul was talking about himself here. He had such a revelation and he has poured out this revelation. So that Paul, Consistent with what Hebrews 1 here has said, as written clearly in Colossians. You remember that in Colossians. Go with me to the book of Colossians, chapter 1. If you read again from verse 15, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion or principalities or power, all things were created through him and for him. So the fourth point is 
He has a name above all names because all things were created. God created all things through him. <laughs> Hallelujah. God Almighty created all things through him. So because of that, everything in heaven and on earth responds to him. Everything responds to him. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. You must hear this. John chapter 1. Now you can understand this scripture better, right? John chapter 1. Let's now read from verse 10. Talking about Jesus. You can read all the way from uh, verse 1. John chapter 1. Let's read from the beginning. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. For in him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's jump to 10. He was in the world and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in what? In his name. The name above all names. Beloved brothers and sisters, God Almighty has packed Unlimited power, salvation, blessings, and all his divine promises in the name of Jesus for us. It is our right. It is our portion if we are in Christ Jesus. And I pray the almighty God will make this a reality in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So feel free now, open the line, and let's discuss. All right, so let's have the conversation. Um, yes, who wants to speak? Question, contribution, confirmation, addition. Please go ahead, go ahead. I want to start by saying that uh, Jesus Christ is, uh, is the internal life. According to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believe that Jesus Christ is the eternal life and uh, is also the savior of the world. Because without him, the world would have been condemned. As uh, we have in that uh, John chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, He that believed in him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So I think that Jesus Christ is the everlasting life, the eternal life, he is also the savior of the world. There is no life outside Christ. The world was already condemned. So for the world to be saved and for anybody to be saved, it has to be through Jesus Christ. So that's my understanding of what Christ is all about. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you then connect that with his name and what his name conveys to us? Yeah, his name is, uh, is the only name because uh, like we read in the... In the Bible, in the scriptures, all over, the Bible says that there is no other name that was given among men that they will have salvation. So that is the only name recognized by God, is the only recognized name. Thank you. Your, your contribution is good and clear. So because Jesus Christ is eternal life, there is no life anywhere else. So his name carries that power. And when we call his name, life comes forth. Glory be to God. Do you agree with that? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question, 
clarification. So in the name of Jesus, everything that we ask, we will receive. The grace, the mercy, everything about God is seen in Jesus Christ. That name opens the door. That name is the name that we will receive all our blessings from God. That name is the remedy. There is no other remedy for all the damages that are seen put on us except the name of Jesus. That is why the Bible, while we were sinners, okay, Christ died for us. So the name of Jesus is associated with everything good that we want from God. Amen. So he's, he's, and that was the song I sang. Then I also sang this one, the joy, I, the, the song of, um, I come to the garden alone. When they, mm -hmm. the trees and the roses, I like the chorus. He talks with me. He walks with me. He mm -hmm. tells me, I'm his own. When mm -hmm. I the joy we share while we tarry mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. none has ever known. The name of Jesus gives you joy. And I, I, I that gives me all the experiences I had with Jesus. Amen. When he he I said, Christ, I have done my own, do your own. I saw him. Mm -hmm. the joy. I that day, Amen. this I I say, who has esteemed the so none has ever known. I pray, have that joy, have tarry with Jesus, and see that joy. It's always amazing. So the name of Jesus me, means joy. It means peace. It means solution to all our problems. Thank you so much. I'm always so excited talking about the name of Jesus. Thank you too. Thank you for the contribution. So um, we've just looked at what has God promised us in the name. We still have the question, why do some people call the name and pray in the name but nothing happens and don't receive answers. We're gonna come back to discussing those. And uh, how shall we ourselves, you know, uh, see and enjoy the power in this name, all these blessings, what, what do we do? Like uh, the people asked Peter and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? So what do we do? From this, what we've looked at, we should have the understanding why this name carries all, all the blessing that we, we have said is in the name. As we have said, God has put everything in the name. So we have to know the authority, the power, the position, the provision that God has invested in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, as we go on to study. So we don't see Jesus physically, just like uh, the apostles and the early believers in the book of Acts. After Jesus died and resurrected, and he went to heaven, they were no more seeing him physically except by revelation. But they, like us today, understood something about the name. That's what we're talking about here. They knew how to use the name. And the name worked in their life. And it's still working in many lives today. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what we are here to learn. And we pray that the Almighty God will take us to that level 
bring us to that knowing and knowledge and understanding of the power and the blessings in the name of Jesus. What is in this name that makes this name thick? And we have seen that this name occupies the highest place. Everything has been put under him, Jesus. Just like we can use various human, various examples in our world to illustrate. Yes. So indeed, he is eternal life. And you must then be able to convey that eternal life when you are speaking or praying or asking in the name of Jesus. That that eternal life comes to bear. Uh, just as we read in that uh, John chapter one, in him was life and the life was the light of man. John chapter one, verse four. And the light shines in darkness and darkness did not comprehend it. Yes, let us wrap up here. Now we'll take um, um, discussions, questions or preparation. So you have heard what we have covered today. Ponder over what you have heard and ponder over this question as, uh, as well and then the other two questions. Um, talking about why do some people call the name? We have heard now what God has provided in the name, right? God has put everything in this name, Jesus Christ for us. And Jesus has inherited the name as a son of God. He has inherited the name above all names as a son and he has inherited everything God has. He has earned it by what he has accomplished as we have seen. God has conferred it on him and through him all things were created. And so everything is answerable to him the through whom God created all things. If you know this and you are in him and you're calling the name, then all things should respond to that name. If you are in the name, if you are identified with him. So question then is for us to look at with all this provision and this knowledge that we have, why do some people call the name and pray in the name, but nothing happens or do not receive answers. And to put it very specifically, the way uh, a question we mentioned or the last time, say what made, makes the difference or what made, let's put it in persons, what made the difference between the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the mouth of Peter and the seven sons of Sceva? What made the difference between the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the mouth of Peter, uh, in the mouth of Peter and Paul, yes, and the seven sons of Sceva. So that's question one to look at under this topic that we're going to deliberate on next time. Now that we know why the name of Jesus is the name above all names and that whatever we ask in that name, we receive. Let's discuss what then makes this difference. Number two question to look at, or number two, to, to study, you review, look at, is the use of this name in the synoptic gospels and the practice and manifestation in the book of Acts by the apostles and the early believers, the use of the name in the synoptic gospels, versus the practice and manifestation in the uh, book of Acts by the apostles. So 
Those are the questions for you to look at and that's what we're going to discuss. So now you have topic to discuss, please go prepare. Yeah, when we meet and questions, remember the objective is that uh, we must grow or we should grow. This is for our continuous growth in faith and knowledge of the son of God, our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, till we come to that uh, measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ as meant for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of the kingdom of God. We thank you for the key of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus that you have given unto us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you cause every one of us to have manifestation experience and fullness of the blessing in this name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are asking you for victory in one way or the other, particularly victory over sin. The name of Jesus has been given us for victory over all things, victory over sin. I ask Lord that you grant victory to everyone who calls the name of Jesus now, as it is written, that those who confess you as Lord will be saved. So everyone that confesses you as Lord, give the victory, give the transformation, answer all their prayers, Lord. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.